I want to talk about the soundtrack to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 because I love it and it pisses me the fuck off. Okay. Guardian, the first Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack uh, made the record books. It was the first soundtrack to ever hit number one on the Billboard Top 100 charts while also not featuring any original music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every single solitary song in the first Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack had been released before. Yeah. And that had never been done in a number one soundtrack ever. There was always a new song. Even Pulp Fiction had a cover of frickin' Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon. Mm -hmm. But never had they had someone released a soundtrack that was all just old songs. And people say, oh, this is a first. This is a record. This is the first time that's ever happened. And in my mind, I said, yeah. And the only movie that will ever beat that is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. But God damn it, David Hasselhoff ruined it. <laughs> With his weird alien ballad to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Although I will say this about the soundtrack to the Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Number one, I have never heard the song Wham Bam Shang -a Lang. In yeah. my life, and now this is my favorite song in the world. Which which scene was that? Um, where they're fighting ego on the planet, and suddenly the the entire sovereign fleet comes to stop them, and the and and Kirk sees them all appear, uh -huh. and as they're appearing, ready to attack the living planet, it, like Kirk is just there, shocked, and wham, bam, Shang -a Lang is playing super loud. Okay. It's a ridiculous song, and I've never heard it before, but now it's my favorite song in the world. There were a no. few songs in this one that I had never heard before. Oh, yeah. Like, I had never heard Lakeshore Drive before. Which, which for me, it made it a little less fun. Yeah. Yeah. You Although, know, cause what, what was fun about the music was the O factor, you know? Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah. I remember this song. But that might not be entirely um, that might not be entirely James Gunn's fault. Yeah, because there have you heard of the movie Baby Driver? I have heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Know nothing else about it. It's a recent film. It's directed by Edgar Wright. So. Um, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. And it's starring um, Kevin Spacey, Jamie Foxx, and a bunch of other people that I don't know. But the... Oh, John Hamm. It focuses on this young guy, and technically he's the baby driver. Baby is the name of Kevin Spacey's crime boss. Okay. And baby driver is the name of his driver who drives everywhere. He's a like a getaway driver. Yes. And it's your typical crime film of this guy trying to get out of the life. Oh, but one last score and the score is doomed to fail and there's all this trouble. It's your typical crime, well-written twists and turns crime drama. But the real amazing part is the driver, baby driver, the star of the film, the young man, he has like tinnitus. Mm -hmm. Or something to that effect. Some sort of disease that causes a constant ringing in his ear. This is like the hook of the film. So he always has earbuds in his ear and he's always listening to music to drown out the sound in his ears. Okay. So his entire life has a soundtrack. Oh, nice. So throughout the entire film, there are these scenes and these getaway scenes and these action scenes that are soundtracked by some of the greatest songs ever. Really? All right. Yeah. I want to see this film only for the soundtrack. There's actually a, there's actually a young MC song in it. Uh, 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 a Pope on film favorite. Yeah. So, um, James Gunn heard about the movie Baby Driver, and one day, he, you know, he's working in post-production on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and he's like, fuck it, I'm going to call Edgar. 
Yeah. He, he gets his phone. Beep, 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 beep. Edgar Wright. Hey, it's uh, James Gunn. Um, so I'm working on Guardians of the Galaxy 2. You're working on this Baby Driver film. Um, maybe we should compare notes. Yeah. And they're both like, oh, hey, that's a great idea. Yeah, no, I've got a list right in front of me of the songs that, that I want to use. And uh, do you have a list of the songs you want to use? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, how about we each name a song and we'll tell each other if that's a song we want to use. Okay. <laughs> and they both got together and Edgar Wright is like, yes, I want to use this classic song. And James Gunn is like, oh, no, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not planning on using that one. And James Gunn says, OK, I want to use this classic song. And Edgar Wright goes, oh, wait, no, I I want to use that one. Yeah. And Edgar Wright's like, OK, I won't use that one. You can use that one. But I do want to use this song. And Edgar Wright goes, oh, I wanted to use that one. You can have it. OK. Like, I really appreciate Edgar Wright and James Gunn because I can't think of any two other directors that would be like, instead of doing the studios and getting angry and hating each other, let's just call each other directly and air this shit out. Yeah. I can't think of any two other directors who would actually do that. You know? Yeah, instead of it being a bitchy fight and yeah. variety headlines. Yeah. So Trouble the, on the, the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 set. Yeah. So there's a possibility that there were a few better songs they were going to use, but Edgar Wright had them as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. So the lack of, of more big-name songs in the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 soundtrack may or may not be the director of Scott Pilgrim's fault. 